Football Pirates. Welcome to another weekly update. And today is May the 19th, 2020. And Kixai has released the update 1021, which is a big one. Let's first get the small stuff out of the way. And then we'll concentrate on the big changes in PvP, base heating more specifically. So there's the big rules of engagement, which we'll talk about in details in a minute. There are a couple of things, uh, Forsaken Mission, uh, after the raid ends today. Forsaken Mission begins tomorrow, May 20th, and we'll have three weeks to redeem the usual prizes and ship tokens and whatnot, plus two new armors for the upcoming skirmish cycle. So we, we, we just had the first raid of the Assault Cycle, which runs in May and June. The skirmish cycle will run in July and August. So this is a, an early opportunity for you to get a few of these a week or all of them in the first couple of weeks and then probably don't need them anymore. And here we can see the new armor in more details, the ZCT and ZX2. We have the artwork, we have their stats, it's similar. They, they're going to give us a concussive damage bonus, which is a good indication that the upcoming new skirmish ship, it's going to be called the Mutineer, will be doing concussive damage. It also has very good concussive survival as usual, no repair time. The explosive armor, identical except it's explosive survival. And here we can just read, no no graphics or anything like that, but we know there will be a new level 136 target, replacing the 135, which is not returning. Everything else in FM is the same, nothing new. Here you can see the target progression now. So there's the 141, 8000, 136, 65, 132, 127, and the 121, 120 are still there. Other than the new armors, everything else is the same. Here you can see their price, 17.5k each. Same as we had to earn for the ZM and ZCO2 for the Zouts. But these ones are for the upcoming Mutineer. Talking about Praetorians and Forsaken Mission, we'll have another run of the Tides of March campaign. Uh, this one is possible to do with Pegasus, but now that you have the Zealots and they are a lot stronger, you can do this one easily with Zealots. So it's going to be very easy for you to get some upgrade tokens, some upgrade kits, and even some specials you may or may not have. There's also the Son of Poseidon TLC, which... At this point, I don't really know who would need or how many players would need technology for their Pegasus. I would think this fleet is reaching end of life. We, most players now have the Zealots at some stage. So really, it's not worth spending shipyard time on the Pegasus unless you want to get some of these upgrade tokens. But they're just 12 hours, so it's really not worth it at this point. And then starting on Friday, we have the VXP weekend. The main target here will be targets for the Zealots. And now assuming most players have the Zealots fleet in a, at least a half decent state. Remember when you complete those VXP targets, when you kill them, you get VXP tokens for your defenders and you can stock up to 99 of them. So whenever a new defender is released, such as recently we had the gatekeepers, you can instantly rank them with these tokens you get from the VXP targets. So even if your Zealots are fully ranked, and actually because they are fully ranked, it's a great opportunity to go and get Defender VXP tokens and stock them up. And that's it. The rest are like small fixes, small HTML5 fixes. So let's now talk about the main course, which is the big PVP update this week. Okay, so this is the post announcing the PvP changes, the base heating changes. They say PvP, but this one's specifically about the dynamic of heating and defending your base. Um, and Kixai simply calls it ROE, Rules of Engagement, but to me it's a lot more than just the rules changing. As a consequence, turrets are changing, builds are cha buildings are changing, 
Uh, the ships themselves are changing. Let's take a look at that in detail. So first of all, to ease our transition into the new model that starts today, they're going to give us a few gifts. Five defender build tokens. So if we need to make changes to some defenders, you're going to have five days to do it for free. Uh, two 48 hour tokens for structures, for buildings. That's good to build stuff, but primarily actually to upgrade them. Then we're going to get 10 tokens of three days each. So that's 30 days of tokens to upgrade or build or modify our turrets. That's important because we have 24 turrets and they're all level 10 now and level 11 turrets going to be released today. You want to get some of them upgraded. We're going to have 30 days of free upgrades to apply. And everyone's going to be getting two fully built Gorgon. It's not clear if they're also going to be upgraded, but they're fully built at least with some kick size specification. And even if you have the maximum number of Gorgons, everybody's going to get two more. Also for one week, starting today, Tuesday, they will give us easy access to base parts and titanium. The top level target, the 109, which I'm sure is going to be hard to find with everyone hitting them, will give us, instead of 300,000, will give us 1.5 million, which is the maximum capacity for base parts. It's also going to give us a three hour Conqueror repair token and a three hour Defender repair token. So this won't repair our bases in case they're hit and destroyed, but it helps you repair your Conquerors and helps the Defender repair their defense ship flag, uh, defense fleet. It says these drops do not overfill, but we don't know the limit. So I don't know how many of those you can hold maximum, but each target will give one of each token. Same with the Titanium, the level 95 Titanium target, instead of giving the usual 30,000, will give us half a million, which is again the maximum capacity. It also gives a three hour repair token for Conqueror and one for Defender. Big changes in what's a win, what's a loss when you hit a base or when you defend your base. So the victory now for an attacker is based on destroying eight key buildings. You got to destroy all eight. You got to destroy the outpost, all warehouses, which is a maximum of five, the radio tower and the great hall. So that's eight. If a player doesn't have the radio tower or if a player has only four warehouses, whatever buildings are missing, they will count as pre-destroyed. So it favors the attacker. So if you don't have your radio tower, you want to build it now. It's about five minutes to build one. These buildings, will, some of them, like the radio tower and the great hall, will, will receive a lot of extra health. We'll talk about that in a moment. And for the base defender, the damage you take in an attack will only persist if the attacker wins. So if your base gets defeated, it's going to repair slowly like it does today. And you get a, a blue bubble. Right? It's a 36 hour long bubble, as it says here, to repair your base. If your base wins, meaning one or more of the eight key buildings are still alive by the time the attacker is destroyed, your base takes no damage. It registers no damage, it's like the attack never happened. If the same player attacks you three times within 48 hours, that player will see your base with a red bubble, meaning that player cannot attack you anymore for 48 hours, but other players can. And that red bubble pops after 48 hours. If multiple players harass your base, keep attacking you within four hours, so eight attacks within four hours and you get a one hour bubble. It's called the anti-harassment bubble. That's been in the game forever, no changes. It's still in the game as it used to be. And the other piece is players with more than 550 medals, so the high medal players, will lose medals down to 550 whenever they purchase a 28-day bubble. So they cannot hit, get a lot of medals, and then buy a bubble to keep those medals. I honestly don't know why people do that. I think it's silly. But anyways, there's a counter against that now. 
For the time being, tier 8 Conquerors will still be allowed in base defense. So if you're using Howlers, if you're using Breachers in your base defense, you can still do it for now. Kixai was going to forbid that with this release, but they decided to give players some time to adjust. Now that time might be a week, might be a month, uh, nobody knows. So assume you won't be able to use Conquerors in your base defense soon and get ready for that event. Now let's talk about the tuning changes. Uh, because of this dynamic that your base cannot be prepped anymore, every hit will have to face your base with full health with all turrets, with all gates, with all everything, and with five minutes to go. I'm assuming five minutes, actually, they didn't say that. Um, a lot of things were changed, and, and mostly when you read them, they made the Conqueror, the newer Conquerors, stronger, and they made the Defenders weaker. And they're justifying that by saying, listen, it's not possible to prep you anymore, people can't come in, kill a couple gates, kill a couple turrets, try to snipe your guard and then retreat, coin repair their ships and come again at full, full power versus your base pre-destroyed, you know, prepped. So now they had to be a little bit stronger. Otherwise, uh, nobody would ever win against a good base. That's the story. Remains to be seen if that's actually balanced. They say it is, they've tested and whatnot. And they're willing to adjust. At least that's what they're saying on this card. It's like, hey, something goes really wrong and we look at the numbers and it's really out of balance. We'll adjust again. Meaning there might be more changes. So the Warhound is the first one. It gained almost 20% more armor. It gained a significant thermal range, meaning it can see gatekeepers from afar. Its weapon, the Gatling gun, reloads a little bit faster and will have twice the damage against submerged targets, meaning gatekeepers again. You notice a theme here that the gatekeepers are taking a pounding from the new Warhounds and got nerfed at the same time. So I was shocked by this. I don't like what I see, but they're saying it's going to be balanced. So it's wait and see. Let's talk about that in a week again. The Trencher uh, got a lot stronger in many items, especially its deflections and its cannon got a lot stronger as well. This maybe could turn the trencher into a main heater because today we know everyone using trenchers are using them just as a prep fleet without cannons, just the missiles. And now maybe they, they will be a useful tool considering there's no preps anymore. Gatekeeper, here's the big nerf. So the range of healing went down from 60 to 45. The, it's only going to start healing once buildings are below 50% health instead of 85. And the problem I see here is usually the buildings, once they're below 50, they're about to die in 2-3 seconds at most. And I really don't know how effective this healing is going to be. The healing rate... It used to add 2 million health every 0.2 seconds, and now it's going to be every 0.4. So twice as slow as it was before, or you can say half as effective as it was before. And now it only it's only going to heal two buildings, not four. So you see it's an overall huge nerf. The tier 8 Conquerors also have been nerfed a lot. The Basilisk lost speed, combat speed, the Subjugator lost a lot of deflections, lost speed, it matches the Basilisk, but it doesn't give the Basilisk an explosive reload bonus anymore, making the Basilisks overall a lot less powerful. The Breacher is the funniest one, because everyone knew that high evade Breachers were very, very hard to kill, but only now Kixai is saying, hey, there was an evasion bonus that it gained while moving because there's an aura at maximum upgrade level. It was not listed as a stat, but it was there. So it was kind of a secret that made it so good. And now we remove that secret evasion that nobody knew about, but that made it so good. So expect your breachers, even though you're not going to see a difference looking at the numbers, it will be a lot less effective if you were one of those using them because of their great evade, as long as you kept moving in a base attack. 
A lot of the old turrets that had cryo fields to slow down, they had huge stacks. They had like a 99, 999 maximum duplicate cap. So that was really distorting things and making, you know, giving defenders the ability to hard freeze attackers sometimes. Now what they're doing is they're putting a cap of one on the how many auras will affect a ship. They're making the speed reduction a lot weaker. And, you know, the reduction on damage types, it's a huge difference on these turrets. The Glacial, they said, was, was having a performance problem, a graphical performance problem because of all the, I think it was 60 something projectiles it fired or, you know. So now they're moving from a ton of projectiles to just one on a big area. And instead of going from 9 to 90%, the longer you stay in the aura, it's going to be a flat 25% reduction speed over a bigger area. Okay. Uh, the cryo adder won't have the flat one second reload debuff. It's now going to have a 25% reload debuff. And it's also going to, but, but it's gaining like a stronger slow effect from minus 15 to minus 25. Launch pad, which is, this is great news, going to reduce in 20, uh, the repair time reduced to 20 minutes. Docks going to have a lot more health, harder to kill. The far side turret gains 10% more accuracy. The decimator gains twice the damage. So I don't think they're going to fix the reload rate, but they're giving us twice the damage and 50% more accuracy. I think it makes it a lot deadlier than it was. The Hellmouth, I don't know what's going to happen in practice, but it's gaining more splash. But at the same time, it's having a fall off. The fall off meaning the, the damage that is stated in the turret, it's, it hits the attacker at the center of the splash point. And with zero fall off, it means at the edge of the splash, the attacker takes the same damage. Now the edge of the splash goes up from 12 to 20, but there's a fall off of 50%, meaning at the edge of the circle, of the splash circle, you're only taking half as much damage. Remains to be seen if that's going to make the Hellmouth more or less effective. I really don't know. Turret level 11, we don't know the extra power, we don't know the extra armor, we know it's going to be more. Warehouse level 18, more armor as well, but doesn't talk anything about more tactical or more whatever, just has more health. Radio tower level two, a lot of extra armor, and it's one of the key buildings that it's gonna look different. That's all we know. And same for the Great Hall. So that's the summary. I am preparing a detailed post of before and after. So watch out for that video coming out in a few days once I get a better understanding of things. One thing that's not documented here anywhere, but Kixai has confirmed is we're gonna have a permanent second repair queue for Conquerors only, just like we have in Bounty. That's gonna be a permanent feature of the game as of tonight. I hope this was helpful and I hope you have fun with all the free repair tokens and all the tons of titanium and base parts to make changes on your base. Remember, there's no bubble pad, there's no need to put things in front, there's no need to hide the guards so people can prep them because they will have to one-hit your base. That opens up a ton of different possibilities for new layouts, uh, including spreading the buildings around, uh, you know, making a longer channel, even if people can snipe the back, uh, you know, as long as the back doesn't have all your key turrets, I don't know. Uh, lots of learning, a fresh take on things. I'm a bit apprehensive, at the same time I'm a bit excited about the news. I really don't like that they nerfed the Gatekeeper, but apparently it was done in the name of balancing the game, we'll see. Um, stay in touch Pirates, let me know in the comments uh, as you try the new upgrade what you think. If you think it's better, if you like the new way, if you, if you think we should still be able to prep, just leave your comments, leave your opinions. See you next time.